is going to show you how he does processing um, landscape, landscape photo in Lightroom. Yeah, yeah. We'll use that one. yeah, yeah, we'll use that one. Hi guys, today I'm going to walk you through three landscape photos, all shot on the Nikon D850, and I'm just going to talk to you very briefly on my Lightroom process on getting those images into a finished state. Now, just as a um, just a, another point, I actually love taking landscape photos into Photoshop for my final finishing. Often I find Lightroom can get you close, but if you really want to make wow images, you want to take it just that little step further, and that's where Photoshop comes in. But Lightroom can get you really close, good enough for putting stuff online, social media, that sort of thing, and still get people going, that's a really cool photo. So I've actually got to submit 12 images that are going into a national calendar and my deadline for that is tomorrow morning. So I've said to my client that I've actually got a whole heap of new work and I want you to have first dibs on using that work. But the um, caveat with that is I need to get it to her by tomorrow morning. So Photoshop can go on the back burner for now. I can polish those photos up later. But for now I just need something that represents the file in a pretty good way. Um, but it's quick to achieve. So let's have a look at some of my techniques. Let's look at the astrophotography shot first. So we're basically going to take the image on the left, which is the raw untouched file, to something more like what's on the right hand side there. So let's dive right in. If we come into our develop module, you can see that everything's zeroed out and the color balance is as shot. First thing I'd like to do is just change the color balance to something more representative of an evening shot. What is the big shiny thing up there in the middle? That's actually the moon. Um, it was a half moon on this occasion, but it just seemed really bright there. You can just see the Milky Way on the left. So what I want to do is bring out the punch in the Milky Way, bring out the detail in the shadows of these rocks, and just focus our attention a little bit because the sky is just you can get get lost up there a wee bit so I just want to bring our viewers attention in a wee bit so the first thing I want to do is look at the general settings this is where the meat of your processing work goes on so the first thing we want to say is are we happy with the exposure and I'd say we could probably pop it up just a tiny bit the contrast I often actually come back to the contrast even though everything else in Lightroom we work sequentially from top to bottom with the, all of these menus um, or that's the way Lightroom sort of laid out so that logically what starts at the top works our way down I'll come back to the contrast later anyway white balance let's give it a more bluey look because it's an evening shot something around there looks nice let's bring the highlights down and the shadows up now we're working with a D850 file so we can actually push this pretty far and there's um, the file still retains um, a lot of the, the quality within the file in the shadows and um, that's going to pre-render. I mean considering this was shot at night, ISO 3200, that is a very, very clean file. Um, I'm going to bring the, the whites up. It's going to start to blow out that moon that even more, but that's okay. It adds a, a sort of nicer bright contrast as you bring the whites up. So we can always address the moon later, which we will. The blacks, I'm not going to shift them too far. Basically, if we hit these triangles, top left and top right, that shows us where we're clipping either on the shadows here or the whites on the moon. So basically, where these blue indicators start to show up, that just says, hey, you're at pure black in these spots. And around there, I'm happy with that. We don't. It doesn't matter if we lose a bit of detail there. Next thing I'll do is just bring up the clarity a little bit, something I like to do in most of my images. Some images you can push a lot further than others, and this is one of those images that I feel that, uh, whereas normally I might stop around the sort of like 20 mark, um, I'm actually going to be a little more brutish with this and push it around plus 60. It really brings out the details in the stars. If we bring up the vibrance, we can see we're really getting some color in there if, if we bring that up like that. I think a good technique to use is actually go quite hard with the sliders and then just rein it back in. So if you push the slider all the way, you can see what the maximum of that effect is and what it's doing to your file, and then you can just rein it back into where you feel it's more, more natural. 
Um, so I'm happy with that at the moment. The next thing I would like to do is use the very, very powerful tool of localized adjustments. I'll often work with the radial filter um, as my preferred tool. The reason I do that, it's just so quick. You can use the paintbrush, and I used to do that before they brought in radial adjustments. Um, but the radial adjustments are just so quick. Click in the center, drag out, and then make your adjustments. Um, so here we're going to dial into the rocks and actually bring the shadows up even more. Let's bring the exposure up. Again, if you if you go really hard, you can kind of see where you're affected. Just bring it back where, where it looks good. Now you tend to get a little bit of haloing. If, if you've pushed these sliders too far, you'll really see where you've applied a filter. Um, what you can do is actually increase the feathering. If you push that all the way to 100, it bec becomes a much softer transition and a more believable look in the finished image. As I'm working on the images, what I like to do is actually keep an eye on the thumbnail in the top left because a good technique to use, similar to how you can assess the overall sort of tones and shapes within your image by blurring your vision, um, you know, just going a little bit cross-eyed and looking at your image, that can give you a feel for what, not getting lost in the details. A similar approach to that is looking at the thumbnail. So if you view that thumbnail, it kind of gives you a sense of, have you gone too far? Um, because sometimes when you're viewing on a big screen, your whole picture and you're working on little areas, it's hard to view it as a whole thing, um, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's a, that's a good tool. Just look, keep an eye on the thumbnail. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of happy with how this is going at the moment. If we bring over the moon, a radial filter, we can actually start to bring some of that detail back to that starburst effect. This was shot with a 14 millimeter lens. It was nice and sharp. Um, and it's given us a starburst, and that comes from how the um, <laughs> the diaphragm within the lens is, is set up, determines what your starburst looks like. Anyway, we've got a hexagonal one, yes, six points. Here with this, this one, you can see it's creating a darker area where I've brought the exposure down, and that's that's good for bringing down the detail and bringing back the highlight detail in the moon, but um, it's also darkening the sky, which we don't want. So we can just bring the shadows up to address that. And if that's still not doing what we want, grab the blacks, bring those up a little bit. We can also just not, not hit the exposure quite so hard and we can use the highlights. But again, if you push it too far, you get this kind of muddying effect around what you're doing, which I don't like. So I just kind of use that just as a little, little sprinkling of it. Um, Okay, so I'm happy with that with the moon. The last thing I'm going to do, or two things I'm going to do, is drag a darkening um, linear filter up from the bottom. And that just helps to bring our viewer's eye up and into the image. And one thing I also often do with the sky is either bring one top to bottom, and again, that helps to focus our attention in on these rocks. Um, and one more way of focusing our viewers attention is to use a radial filter and actually uh, we're creating a vignette so we're going to invert the mask we can darken down those corners if i do that really strong you can see exactly what we're doing we're not going to obviously do it this much but just so you can get an idea of what we're doing so we're vignetting the edges drawing our viewers eye into the, the center of the frame and then we can just dial that back so it's a much more subtle effect and again, I'll bring the feathering up higher than that normal standard 50 marker, push it towards the 100 mark. And I think we're, we're looking quite nice. Um, if we again can pair the two files uh, by pressing the N key, we can see that we've got pretty close. I've just realized one thing that I haven't done on our version that we're working on at the moment, the Milky Way in my original version or the version I've already worked on, the Milky Way has a lot more punch to it. The one on the left that we're working on doesn't. So what we're going to do to address that is, again, use a radial gradient filter, and we're going to crank the clarity up on that. So select the filter, drag it out. At the moment, it's circular. 
we don't want a circular one, we want something that's going to follow the direction of that Milky Way. So you can actually grab the control points and turn it more into an ellipse. And then if you hover at the edges, you can rotate that ellipse. So we're on the same angle as the Milky Way. Double click any slider and that will reset it to zero. So we'll double click the exposure that was set lower, grab the clarity and pull that all the way up. And all of a sudden we have a Milky Way. One other thing you could do is if you wanted to start changing the color balance within the Milky Way to bring out a little detail in the stars or just, just a little differentiation. Um, on this occasion, I'm not going to do that. And we'll call that done. So that's a nice, um, nice development in that particular photo from where we were. If we reset that and then undo it to where we've gone to. So I think that's a big improvement. Now let's see if we can work with this image and get it pushed to something more like this. So when, when I am working with my files in Lightroom, I always try and have an end goal in mind. Like what do I want this photo to actually say? Um, so that I'm not just moving sliders around or putting, um, pudding, mm, pudding, putting, um, putting radial filters in a random way. I have a specific purpose for each thing that I'm doing. So in this one, I can see that the file has the ability to showcase that beautiful pastel sky that I saw when I was there with my own eyes. I know that it's in there in the file. I just need to bring that bad boy out. So that's what I'm going to try and do here with this one. So let's start off the same as we did last time. Let's address the exposure. This image is underexposed. So let's, let's bring that up. And already, if we push this all the way up, I'm not saying this is where it will finish, but a plus two in the exposure, and we can see that the D850 files handle it absolutely fine. So we've, we've got a lot of latitude to really push and pull this file how we want it. Um, the first thing I am going to do actually is just sort the crop out. So I've clicked the crop tool and I'm just looking along the horizon line and I'm just making sure that that's straight because there's nothing worse in a landscape photo than a wonky horizon line. It just makes your work look really amateur in my opinion. You've got to fix that. So let's, let's just put that about plus 1.2. Um, Again, grab the contrast, by all means, it's not a, uh, something I'm going to use straight away, but if you grab it and just have a little play, see what it's doing to your file, um, we can add a little bit of contrast, not too much. Now, with all Nikon files from my cameras from my D70, D200, D750, D800, and now D850, every single Nikon camera can benefit from these basic adjustments. You've got the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Take the highlights down, shadows up, whites up, blacks down. And that will actually create contrast within your image that you have controlled, not just grabbing the contrast slider and going um, So let's, let's look at that. Bring the highlights down, bring the shadows up, bring the whites up, bring the blacks down. Straight away, we've created more contrast. Um, how far you put you take those sliders is entirely up to you. But I'm finding that whereas I might not push these sliders too far with previous cameras, the D850 can handle really getting those sliders and giving them a good hard shunt. Um, so look, this this is pretty pretty good as a starting point. Let's grab the clarity. Let's see what happens. If you push clarity too far, it starts to look really, in my opinion, too too gritty and too punchy, high contrast in a localized way, like really the black's black, white's more white. But done with a with a little bit of finessing, um, I think it's completely acceptable. Now, color is important in the, this image. So if I grab the vibrant slider, um, we're starting to get more of the look I'm after. So at this point, I'm gonna say I'm done with my global adjustments. The next thing I'm going to do is work on a more localized level where I'm going to start grabbing these um, uh, local adjustment tools again. So here I'm going to grab the radial adjustment again. What I want to do is amplify the feeling that this photo has 
as well. So the light was coming in from the right. And I could see it out of the corner of my eye. Even though it's not captured in frame, I could see it when I was there. So I'm going to bring in some of this light. I'm going to fake it into this image because I know it was there. I can't see it here. So it's, if I start dragging out um, an ellipse from the right-hand side, it's it has my previous settings loaded in. I don't care. Minus 56 in exposure. But we're going to bump that up. Straight away, we're starting to increase the brightness, uh, which is actually blowing out a lot of the color detail here. So we're just going to grab the highlights now and just bring that back down slightly. But we're lightening that right hand side. Um, I also felt there was a nice orangey pinky glow coming from there. So I'm going to grab the color temperature, pump that all the way up on the yellows, all the way up on the pinks. And we're really starting to get a nice pinky glow over this side. I'm also going to feather this so it's a more subtle effect because I feel that subtlety is, is the key. Although I, a lot of my images um, have a lot of kind of punch and sometimes maybe they do look like they've been processed. Um, and I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. I love a photo that looks like it's been worked and artworked and has been improved by the photographer. But at the same time, you don't want to overcook it. So you have to be careful and keep it looking realistic and authentic to the scene. So another thing that's kind of bugging me here is the green field. I know it's a green grassy field, but I feel like it needs some of that pink light to be falling on it. So I'm going to grab another ellipse that's going to cover that grass and I'm going to change the color balance of that. Let's play with the yellow and let's add some of this pink as well. Now, at the moment, that's not looking good, but we can we can just play with this until we get it to a point that we like. Maybe we just need to add the magenta and not too much. Hmm. Maybe the blue, the blue of the sky. Let's bring the... Ah, if we bring the brightness up, the exposure, we can actually kind of see the, the color effect more. And now we can start to kind of color match that to that little puff of... Um, pinky orange in the sky and I quite like that. If we hold the shift key we constrain the ratio of, of this ellipse and that we can shrink it down and now I can widen it and just make it slightly bigger again. Now it's actually going to cover the grass more, more accurately. Okay the next thing I'm going to do is just start to control the sky so that our eye comes to where we want it. If we drag down an exposure uh, gradient from the sky that will just darken the top and again help to focus our eyes in on these mountains and at the moment with that I kind of feel like we're at a good place one last thing we might do is just increase the detail in the mountains so if we grab another radial filter pop that over there let's just brighten them ever so slightly and add a little touch of clarity we can even try the dehaze slider, but to me, often the dehaze filter is one that you need to be super subtle with because if you push it too far, it just looks disgusting. So um, a little bit might help, but not too much. And I'm happy with that. Um, we can further enhance the colors if we want to by using split toning. And within the highlights, we can kind of push it towards a nice pinky color so it's going even further and that's a nice thing to do because we're unifying the whole picture because at the moment um, we've done localized color changes but by speaking to the highlights and the shadows within the whole picture it brings a unity to the picture so now let's go into the shadows add a sort of complementary color that blue it's a little too strong so just click down towards the bottom and that's going to give you a, a less saturated version of that or you can grab the slider and crank that up and down. I just like to prefer to click in the, the color dropper and we'll call that one done as well. So if we look at our before and after, I'll reset it to show you the before and that's our after. So let's go again. Before after. I like that.
Whew, we're getting there. There's two of the three. Are you still with me? Good. Good on you. Right, let's go for the third one. So if I select these side by side, you can and press the N key, that gives us our comparison. And slowly does it. Um, <laughs> computer. But there we go. We've got our comparison between our before and what we're heading towards. Now, honestly, when I was at this scene, um, the light to my eye, to my human eye, which is so much more powerful than even the fantastic sensor in the D800, I saw what was on the right hand side. That's what it looked like and felt like to me. So I need to put this image that looks at the moment on the left cold and kind of uninviting. Um, I need to give it the, the life it needs. So let's dive in and see what we can do. Um, if, if you look on the image that I have pre-processed, I brought a little bit of interest to the pathway that leads us in. I've warmed the sun and sunlight area and um, just brought more detail into the actual uh, rock formations. So let's have a look at how we can do that. First thing I think we need to address is this cool color temperature. Let's warm this puppy up. Let's grab that and we want to push it quite far, but I don't want to push it so far that I lose the all the blue in the sky. Somewhere around 7,000 for the Kelvins is, is good. And we'll also grab the tint and just put that yeah, somewhere around there. Now, we have a big discrepancy between sky tonality and foreground. Dark foreground, bright sky, we need to unify those two together again. So, we can do that with our rate, uh, linear gradients. Let's grab one of those, pull it down, and we can bring the exposure down just a little bit further on that one. Let's grab one from the bottom and bring that up. And let's bring that up a wee bit. So now we're, because our exposure was okay for the foreground and okay for the sky, but not perfect for either, we're able to push one up and lower the other one by, you know, plus one, plus two in exposure, and the file can handle that. I actually bracketed five different exposures here on my tripod, thinking I may well need those, but this file can handle it all. Um, anyway, so that, that gives us a better exposure base to work with. So let's go back to our global adjustments. So exposure wise, I think maybe a little brighter. It highlights, let's follow that same pattern, highlights down, shadows up, whites up, blacks down. And that is starting to give us more contrast through the image. But I feel as if um, we need to now work these gradients again. So let's let's actually bring that quite far down. And the one on the bottom, I almost feel like we don't we don't need to push that as far. Let's bring that down just a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna darken the foreground. A lot of it, what I do with landscapes is designed to guide the viewer's eye. Um, lead them into the picture where I want them to, to be. So at the moment I want that bright sunlight, that sunburst is going to be one thing, and I'm going to use the pathway to lead the, the viewer's eye in towards that. So to do that I'm going to darken the grass either side just with a radial filter, uh, nothing too fancy. We can use the feathering on that at maximum strength. Now we can use another radial filter and actually bring the exposure up on this. And this is what's going to brighten our path. Now, this is where the handles come in handy. <laughs> um, and we can actually sh grab the handles, shape and rotate our um, adjustment accor according to what we actually want. So that's far too bright at the moment, but we can just reduce that down. Sometimes it's nice to pump it up. You can actually see what, you, what you're doing. If you right click on the control node, you can actually duplicate those adjustments and then 
we can now shape this bit to match the path up the top. If you hold the shift key again, it scales the whole thing down all in one move. And that's pretty cool. It's starting to showcase the, um, the path. What I'd also like to do is brighten the top of the hill, um, just where it goes over the ridge, just to bring a little bit of interest and detailing around there. So let's do that. Now, if it's the sun that's hitting here, that would be a or more orange color. So let's add some, uh, some color temperature. Let's add some tint. And we've gone a little bit too far with that, so we'll just rein it back in, particularly that pinky tint. And we're going to duplicate this. I'm going to move it over to the left. And we're going to duplicate it again, and we're going to put it going up the hill on this side. But what I'm going to do is actually just reduce the opacity of this one. Reduce the opacity, I'm talking Photoshop speak. Um, <laughs> just bring these sliders back down so it's not as intense. Um, because of the sunlight, I feel it would not really be hitting this little area. I really don't need to push that one too far. And here for this one, we're going to bring bring that down as well, just so it's not as strong this effect on this bit. Yeah, that'll do. That looks good. Okay. Now we certainly want to increase the interest on the mountains in the background. So let's crank the clarity up on that. Done. Maybe a little too far, I think. And we're blowing out in this area here. We are overexposed. So we we don't really want that. So what we're going to do is just bring the exposure down, but also the highlights down. That's cool. Okay, now let's address the color because we just don't have much color going on at all considering what an amazing warm scene this was. So let's bring the vibrance up and see what that gives us. It's doing some gnarly things in the clouds there. So we don't want to go anywhere near that far. But maybe plus 34 is a good place to start. And now we're going to use some localized adjustments to actually control the color. From the sun area, which would obviously be a warm color, let's bring the temperature of that way up. Let's bring the tint up a little bit and the color temperature quite far. And now we've got our effect. We can bring it across where we want it to, to fall in the image. So something like that's nice. And let's feather it again. Yeah, I like that. We're creating an ellipse so that the sun looks like it's kind of radiating out to the right and not every direction. We're keeping it focused across that um, horizon area. Now, by the same token, I feel like the right hand side where the blue sky is showing through could probably benefit from some blue tinting. So let's bring some blue in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't want to bring the exposure down because it's going to darken it too much. And if we actually increase the size of this, that'll make it a more um, a softer transition in that gradient. Potentially, we could bring some blue in in our foreground here. It's kept the settings from before, just again to kind of create uh, a harmony within the image. It's it's leading us from a cool tone at the bottom to warmth in the middle, back to cool at the top. So it kind of leads us and draws us into that centerpiece. We're invited into that nice warm center of the image. Now the other thing I really want to do here is actually bring up some of the detail in these rock areas here. So let's grab a couple of adjustment radial filters. As I'm clicking that you can see just how many filters we've added to this. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty high. Um, but that's fine. That's fine. It's, it's a quicker way to do things in Lightroom than it is in Photoshop. So each of these um, images we worked on have probably only taken us, what, six or seven minutes each. This one's slightly longer, I think. But, uh, you know, you can achieve pretty good results in Lightroom pretty quickly, I feel. Um, if we push 
this the shadows up here um, and we feel like we're brightening too much on this hillside which I actually do we can always come in and just delete that radial filter that we put in there before yeah and that that's gone and I think that's that's fine like that um, certainly want the detail there but not too much so that's bring that back down like I said subtlety sometimes it's easy just to go too far with things um, now the next thing that I would like to do is just add a bit more contrast to this. So I said we don't normally use the contrast slider until the end. I kind of get the image where I want it to be and then I go, okay, can I push the contrast a little bit? And in this case, I most definitely can. And we're going to add one last thing, which is a radial filter, <laughs> surprise, surprise, which is going to create a vignette to bring our attention right into this mountain. So let's click somewhere around the middle bring our radial filter out in an elliptical fashion and invert the mask oh. and now we have this nice little area that is brighter in the center of the image move the exposure slider just slightly because we don't want to overcook it if we overcook it oh you know that's it's really extreme i think the difference between work that can look high quality and professional and work that can just look a little cheap uh, <laughs> for want of a better word is the subtlety with which things can be done and it's a fine line to walk and I know that I'm sometimes guilty of just pushing things too far but if you do it can just look cheap it's, it's easy to go go crazy with sliders and think yeah that's a really awesome vignette and that's really going to draw people's eye in. But it's it's too much, right? That's just too much. So you just got to use these things sparingly. It'd be like a, a chef making an amazing meal. You know, they're not heavy handed with the ingredients. Everything's done really specifically. Um, anyway, um, now, we, now we're getting close. You can just come in and fine tune your your final things like your exposure etc the last thing i would like to do on this image is actually crop it because i feel that it's a stronger image if we come into a more panoramic crop so perhaps we could um, choose like a 2-1 crop that's one way of doing it um, and then we could we could set this up look how nicely that falls to the rule, rule of thirds um, you know, pre-visualize that in, in camera. We've got the path on the right-hand third. We've got the mountain. Um, you've got the the horizon line here on the bottom third, top of the mountains on the top third, and the sun sunrise basically over there on this this third. So that's that's quite a nice crop we've got there. Um, we're losing a lot of our blue in the sky, so potentially we could have a little play round again with the temperature we could also introduce some blue by forcing it in with a radial filter and just playing with the color temperature again are you going to reset for me yeah okay but i, I again well too much right um i don't even know if it needs that it doesn't leave it alone turn them you've done enough Right, let's have a have a look at our before and after. That was our before, and that's our after. So that's our before, and that's our after. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it's just a quick walkthrough of some of my processes when I'm working on landscape images without su support in terms of just a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. It's gonna be hard for me to keep going with this, but I, w I really want to. So if you've enjoyed it, please, 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 please help me out um, and just hit that subscribe button and look forward to putting some more content together for you soon. Thank you very much, and catch you later. Um, my daddy is going to do, show some um, 
technique and possessity. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy is going to show you some my room. Close enough. Uh, I thought I said all the words right. Uh, yeah, it was pretty close. All was wrong. Come here. Good girl. My daddy owner is going to tell you his technique on Adobe Lightroom. <laughs> no, not funny. Mm -hmm. Love you. Mm -hmm.